Hey, what's up? It's Six Talio. Today I'm going to be talking about the iPhone 4 and 4S proximity sensor issue after you've replaced your front LCD digitizer assembly um, on your phone. Um, usually, if you like cracked your screen or you just wanted a different color, mine's blue and stuff. I guess it's cracked. I'll talk about that in a sec. But anyway, um, some of you may notice your proximity sensor doesn't work. And what does your proximity sensor do exactly? When you receive a call or you make a call and you put your phone to your ear, your screen is supposed to shut off. What does that? The proximity sensor. Um, what doesn't? What prevents it from working? It's uh, usually because your proximity sensor port, which is located just above your ear speaker, um, it's letting in too much light. Now, why does it let in too much light? Well, and I guess these are uh, Zebra 4S parts. I'll talk about where to get those in a second, too. Now, um, if you look right here, uh, you'll see that it's purple. Well, when you put it up against something. And I do not know why there's another dot over here, because it's not usual on them. But uh, the way your uh, proximity sensor behind your glass is supposed to look, there's supposed to be a gasket going around it, and a little uh, black divider going right between it. Um, on the left, it's a little bit more wider. On the right, it's uh, a little bit more narrow there is supposed to be that divider right there and uh, what that does is it blocks too much light from going in and um, yeah and it lets it so uh, when everything's too dark around the proximity sensor that's when it turns off and I will demonstrate how the proximity sensor is supposed to function and uh, my friend dropped my iPhone 4S and the glass did crack I'm getting my replacement part should be tomorrow and uh, yeah just gonna fix that tomorrow. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and call 611. When I'm on the call, I can simply just put it right above there, and it will turn off. It's because it's sensing my finger right above the proximity sensor. And mine responds perfectly fine. Now, uh, sometimes when you get a uh, iPhone 4 or 4S front assembly, um, from uh, whoever you get it from. Uh, sometimes the, that gasket I was talking about might not be there. So if you look through here, again, just check there. If it's completely clear, like just clear around there, there might be a gasket but no divider in between it, then it's more likely your proximity sensor will not function. Um, so the way to fix that, you can either just... Uh, if your glass is broken, you're not going to be reusing it, and you're just doing a color conversion. Uh, you might want to be kind of careful with it if you want to reuse it. But if you're not going to reuse it because it's cracked or something like that, then you could probably take like a screwdriver and X-Acto knife and kind of pry that gasket off and put it on your uh, new front assembly. That should solve your proximity sensor issues. Um, but uh, I've seen a, a lot of people think that their proximity sensor flex cable is actually messed up, and then they end up replacing a whole part, and then they find out that it still doesn't work. And it just creates a lot of hassle, a lot of aggravation. Um, you pretty much waste five bucks, because that's pretty much what the part costs to replace like your proximity sensor, headphone jack, camera, back camera, power button, whatever. Oh, and by the way... Um, if you're gonna order uh, third-party parts, do not order from Ztron.com. I will emphasize this like hell. Their parts are very low quality, very overpriced, and overall just completely shitty. Um, I ordered one part from them, and uh, it just didn't function at all. It was a Verizon for Verizon iPhone 4 front assembly, and uh, right from installing it, it just did not turn on at all. I got a replacement part from them. It took about a week, just over a week, to get the replacement part. And, um, yeah. So, yeah, don't order from Zetron. Um, normally, their front assemblies alone for the iPhone 4 black or white are about $85. That is a ripoff. iPhone 4 black or white front assemblies usually cost between $30 and $35. For uh, iPhone 4 colored, Front assemblies are usually about forty-five bucks. Forty-four ninety-five is the average price that I usually spend on them. Full kits usually range around uh, fifty to fifty-five dollars for full four kits, 
and for iPhone 4s these this kit in particular cost me fifty three dollars the zebra iPhone 4s full kit cost me sixty dollars from Hong Kong which was the only place I found them I uh, just got them in just short of two weeks and uh, but iPhone 4s full kits usually range between fifty and sixty um, just a little bit of information there and uh, all parts can be found on eBay in the US or these ones in particular from Hong Kong um, these are actually pretty good I'll be installing them in about a week uh, on my friend's iPhone 4s she just wanted zebra I guess so yeah that's just a little bit of rundown on zetron.com why not to order from them um, if you need a link to um, uh, iPhone 4 or 4S replacement parts, go ahead and feel free to uh, personal message me. Um, I'll send you links to uh, dependable sellers on eBay that uh, I usually get parts from. And um, yeah. But uh, just a heads up, you will never find a OEM colored part. It does not exist no matter what any seller says. Even uh, eBay sellers will say these are OEM parts, blah, blah, blah. There's no such thing as OEM colored part. Um, the only thing that makes a, a real difference between black, white, or colored is the color of enamel on the glass. All the glass from the factory is clear until you put an enamel on it, which I don't do that, so don't ask me about it. But uh, that's really the only difference. But there's no such thing as a colored OEM part. But uh, full kits usually include LCD digitizer fused, which you always want to get, button, and uh, back plate housing but uh, also when you get your part make sure you test it um, before installing just kind of connect it hold it with your finger put your battery in and then turn it on with like a tool or something to press the power button and uh, just make sure everything on your touch screen works uh, once you verified that try to hold the power button without uh, disconnecting these and turn it off um, you can't really verify this will work your proximity sensor however um, yeah, just make sure it has that little divider between the uh, proximity sensor port thingy. And, yeah, there's me right there. What's up? Anyway, if this video was helpful to you at all, um, or you need a little bit more verification on something specific, uh, go ahead and uh, feel free to comment, rate, subscribe, personal message me, whatever. Follow me on Twitter at 6 Um... Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and end this video, and yeah. Okay, so see ya.